And it's also a star, pages 230 to 233, Natasha. But I don't tell attorney Fitzgerald that part about how my father's wife and children are his greatest regret because we got in the way of his life, of the life he dreamed for himself. Instead, I say a few weeks after he was arrested, we got the notice to appear letter from Homeland Security. He looks over one of the forms I filled out earlier for the paralegal and gets a yellow legal pad out of his desk drawer. So then you went to the master calendar hearing. Did you bring a lawyer with you? Oh, only my parents went, I tell him. And they didn't bring a lawyer. My mom and I talked about it a lot before the appointment. Should we hire a lawyer we couldn't really afford or wait to see what happened at the hearing? We read online that you didn't really need a lawyer for your first appointment. At that point, my father was still insisting that everything would be miraculously work out for itself. I don't know. Maybe he wanted to believe it was that was true. Attorney Fitzgerald shakes his head and jots something down on his legal pad. So at the hearing, the judge tells them they can't accept voluntary removal or file for cancellation of removal. He looks down at my forms. Your younger brother is a U.S. citizen? Yes, I say, watching as he notes that down too. Peter was born almost exactly nine months after we moved here. My parents were still happy with each other then. My father didn't accept the voluntary removal at the hearing. That night, my mom and I researched cancellation of removal. In order to qualify, my dad needed to have lived in the United States for at least 10 years, have, have shown good moral character, and be able to prove that being deported would cause extreme hardship on a spouse, parent, or child who was a U.S. citizen. We thought Peter's citizenship was good enough to be our saving grace. We hired the cheapest lawyer we could find and went to the merits hearing armed with this new strategy. But as it turns out, it's very difficult to prove extreme hardship. Going back to Jamaica will not put Peter's life in danger, and no one cares about the psychological danger of uprooting a child from his home, not even Peter himself. And at the merits hearing, the judge denies your case and your father accepts the voluntary removal? Attorney Fitzgerald says it flatly, like the outcome was inevitable. I nod instead of answering out loud. I'm not sure I'll be be able to talk without crying. Any hopes I had is slipping away. I had agreed that we should appeal the judge's decision, but our lawyer advised against it. She said we had no case and that we were all out of options. She suggested we leave voluntarily so we wouldn't have a deportation on our record. That way we'd have a hope of returning one day. But Cheryl puts his pen down and leans back in my, his chair. Why did you go to the USCIS today? It's not even in their jurisdiction. I have to clear the tears pooling in my throat before I can answer. I didn't know what else to do. The truth is, despite the fact that I don't believe in miracles, I was hoping for one. He's silent for a long time. Finally, I can't take it anymore. It's okay, I say. I know I'm out of options. I don't even know why I came here. I make a move to get up, but he waves me back down. He steeples his fingers again and looks around the office. I follow his eyes to the unpacked boxes lining the walls to his right. Behind him, a folding ladder rests against an empty bookshelf. We're just moving in, he says. The construction guys were supposed to be done weeks ago, but you know what they say about plans. He smiles and touches the bandage on his forehead. Are you okay, Mr. Fitz? I'm fine, he says, rubbing the bandage. He picks up a framed picture from his desk and looks at it. The only thing I've unpacked so far, he turns the picture so I can see it. It's him with his wife and two children. They seem happy. I smile politely. He puts it back down and looks at me. You're never out of options, Miss Kingsley. It takes me a second to realize that he's back to talking about my case. I lean forward in my seat. Are you saying you can fix this? I'm one of the best immigration lawyers in the city, he says. But how? I ask. I lay my hand on his desk. I press my fingers against the wood. Let me go see a judge friend of mine. He'll be able to get the voluntary removal reversed, so at least you don't have to leave tonight. After that, we can file an appeal with the BIA, the Board of Immigration Appeals. He checks his watch. Just give me a couple of hours. I open my mouth to ask for more facts and specifics. I find them reassuring. The poem comes back to me. Hope is a thing with feathers. I close my mouth for a second time today. I'm letting go of the details. Maybe I don't need them. It would be so nice to let someone else take over this burden for a little while. Hope is the thing with feathers. I feel it fluttering in my heart.